Hi everybody. In this episode I will tell you a little bit more about the car Intel Cooler, how it's used, where it's mounted and how it's working basically in cars. Uh, so to start Intel Cooler is just the radiator, the radiator that is cooling down the air that is coming into the engine, into the combustion chamber from the like outside, outside world. The main difference between intercooler and the normal cooling radiator is that the cooling radiator will be used in every single car basically apart from the cars like early 911s when we don't have uh, like the normal coolant radiator but the intercooler will be used only on boosted cars so either if we got the turbocharged or supercharged we will use intercooler on natural aspirated engines we will not use this kind of radiator but the main question right there to answer is why we are using intercooler what is the reason behind that? So the reason behind it is thermodynamics. Uh, if we are compressing the air, the temperature of the air goes up, but the density of the air goes down. And that means that with a hot air, we got lower amount of oxygen inside the air. Uh, this is called in thermodynamics adiabatic compression. This will be not exactly 100% adiabatic compression right there, but we can like assume that this is some kind of uh, this effect. And that's why we need to cool down the air just to have greater amount of oxygen inside the air to increase the power of the engine. We can think about it like the hot air balloon. So the balloon is going up because we are heating up the air. That the air inside the balloon is getting a little bit less dense than the outside air. And that's why the balloon is going up. The effect of increasing temperature inside the inside the engine by the compressing that we can describe by Poisson equation so we are considering right there with this equation the inlet pressure and the outlet pressure of the some kind of charger the temperature on the inlet and the temperature on the outlet and the adiabatic and the adiabatic index for the air on the right side of the screen you can see the example so the inlet temperature is 280 kelvins secondary pressure on the outlet is 1.5 bar uh, the inlet pressure is 1.0 bar uh, so the difference is 0.5 bar the adiabatic index is 1.4 and what you can do we are calculating that and it's turning out that the temperature is increasing by 34.4 celsius so this is great amount of temperature that we are getting just from compressing air by 0.5 bar and that's why we need to cool down the air to have more oxygen into the engine so we can also estimate a little bit how the high temperature inside our intake affects the power so we can assume that for every 10 degrees up on the temperature we are using one percent of our power so imagine that our starting temperature is four degrees and the temperature after compressing the air is 100 degrees so we increase the temperature of the air by 60 degrees celsius and we are using six percent of the power so imagine that you got uh, 350 horsepower so after increasing the air without a cooling you only had 329 horsepower while talking about the intercooler we can also uh, ask ourselves what about the pressure drop inside the intercooler so the pressure between the, the inlet and the outlet of the intercooler so I tried to like come up with something but it's very hard to calculate that with analytic equations without the CFD or something like that so I reached out to Mishimoto company which is one of the largest aftermarket creator of various kind of radiators and they said that the best way to approximate the pressure drop inside the intercooler is just to measure that on existing part or just choose the intercooler which is from the dimensions very similar to the OEM so right now if we know how the intercooler is uh, working and why we are using that we can talk about the placement of that radiator so we got three basic types front side and top the front is basically in the front of the of the car somewhere in the center uh, very often in front of coolant radiator we got also the side mounted intercooler so this is placed in front of the wheel for example as i remember correctly this is uh, for the 1.9 tdi vw engines for example and we also got the top mounted inter intercooler and this is uh, very common in the subaru boxster engine so you can see that the radiator is mounted on the top of the engine 
So right now we can talk about the heat transfer and we got two basic types of heat transfer inside the intercooler. So we got the radiator that is air to air and we got the second radiator, water to air. So air to air is just a very simple, very common radiator, but the air to water intercooler is not very common because this is much more complicated, but it's used because the water has the higher heat capacity. So you can take a lot of more heat from the air than the air from the air. So starting with the radiator air to air, it's working on the principle of convection, radiation and the heat transfer. So the air inside the intercooler is cooled down by the air that is coming through the fins of the intercooler using those three principles that I mentioned earlier. So we are basically exchanging the heat between the inside and the outside air while using the three principles, especially convection. And what about the water to air intercooler? So we can think about this system as uh, like inverted cooling system. Uh, like the cooling system for the engine. Why? Because in the cooling system of the engine we are using air to cool down the coolant inside the engine. But with the water to air intercooler we are using the water to decrease the temperature of the air inside the intake manifold. The main disadvantage of that is that the system is much more complicated than the normal air to air intercooler uh, but it's much more efficient because the water can take a lot of more heat than the air. So that means that the radiator itself can be a lot smaller. So you ever saw for example S55 B30 engine from the like the F80, F82, M3, M4 BMWs. You can see that on the top of the engine there is water to air intercooler and it's very small. It's pretty small but you can see also that we got the uh, second water pump, we got the second expansion tank, so you can already see that this system is much more complicated than the, than the air to air intercooler. And what is also dangerous, we can sometimes leak the air inside the intake manifold and the water can just hydrolock the engine and for example it can change shape of our Conrad. So as you can see we got a lot of effects going on while decreasing the intake uh, temperature by the intercooler and the, what are the main reasons why it cannot be like easily calculated by hand. So the first reason is that the temperature is not the same in every single part of intercooler. So for example on the part of the inlet we got the lower temperature than on the part of the outlet or other way around. Uh, the second reason is that the flow through the radiator is not laminar. It can be turbulent caused by, I don't know, maybe the brake duct or something like that. So it cannot be easily uh, calculated. Uh, I think only the CFD is the way out. Uh, we got two, at least two versions of convection. So we got the uh, convection between the air inside the intercooler and the fins and we got the air outside and the fins. So basically those are a couple of types of convection. We got the heat transfer, uh, we got difference uh, in the fin shape, the fin quantity and everything. Uh, we got the radiation of the heat and for example heat capacity is different in the different parts of intercooler due to the, for example, uh, the difference in the thickness of the material uh, or the material itself because for example the outside parts of the intercooler on the OEM especially are very often plastic and they are not aluminium so we got the change right there so the so the heat capacity also is different and those are the reason why we cannot just easily calculate the size and uh, everything that is happening with the intercooler so about the uh, for example pressure drop if you like this movie just uh, give the thumbs up leave the comment i always want to like communicate with you all and see you soon